what we found. Great, thanks, Don. Um, good morning, everyone. I actually just want to start by um, saying it was quite an honor to be part of this process. I think for all of us on the committee, um, it was uh, just an amazing opportunity to be able to evaluate the, or work on a, a rigorous evaluation of the largest public health program in the world focused on a single issue that all of us care about. So um, we also, I think, have a lot of gratitude to the many, um, o over, you know, almost 400 stakeholders that talked with us and spent time with us and took time to, to contribute their experience to this process. So what I'm going to do is um, go through our conclusions. So the IOM committee was asked to come up with conclusions based on evidence, and then we had recommendations, and that's what Anne is going to provide. Um, and we've organized the conclusions in, in generally uh, a general way to respond specific, specifically to the congressional charge. We were asked by Congress to look at specific areas, and that's what I'm going to uh, focus on. The first was the looking at the progress of PEPFAR in meeting its targets. Um, and the report, which you can download on, on the website, um, actually details in lots of um, uh, examples, lots of evidence, um, quantitative data, qualitative data, what we saw as progress towards those targets. And I would say um, the main conclusion was that there's significant progress towards the targets. These are the latest targets that are published um, by PEPFAR. Obviously, a lot of you know these, that the treatment current target is to treat more than six million people, um, and the latest results are, uh, over, are about f over five million. The prevention target um, is more of a challenge to measure, which is not a necessarily unique pro problem for PEPFAR, but the current target of preventing 12 million new infections, there were no public results for modeling that we, of infections averted that we were able to access, but PEPFAR has published um, that in fiscal year 2012, it supported ARVs for PMTC for nearly 750,000 HIV positive women and estimated that 230,000 infants were born without HIV. Uh, in pro continuing with progress toward targets, the latest uh, care results, the current target being uh, providing care to more than 12 million, including 5 million OVC, and you can see the latest results there supporting care for nearly 15 million, including more than 4.5 million OVC. These are the, the published targets, but the report, as I mentioned, goes into <coughs> the detail that we put together from evidence about progress, uh, which we found to be substantial. Secondly, we were asked in general to look at the impact of PEPFAR-supported HIV prevention care and treatment programs, and we concluded as a committee that PEPFAR has su supported significant scale-up in all these areas, has increasingly ensured that attention is paid to vulnerable populations. Um, one of the things that, that is, you know, st stepping back from the report, and hopefully when you get a chance to look at it, you'll see is that it is a dynamic program, and a lot of what we're talking about are things that have changed over time. When we started the evaluation in 2009, these were not foregone conclusions. It was at a point in time when I think the program was beginning transitions in a lot of these directions. We concluded that the program had indeed saved um, millions of lives and improved millions of lives. And I think essential to those working in HIV had provided proof of principle that you can do this, that you can successfully scale up a large program um, in countries with high disease burden. Thinking back to when PEPFAR was first authorized, that was not the global consensus. That was not necessarily what many thought. And this program, we concluded, has proved that that is indeed the case. We were asked to look at the impact of PEPFAR on child health and welfare. Um, we concluded that the program has indeed elevated attention to this issue, and especially related to OVC programs, has provided significant investment. Um, the, we did note challenges in this area. The coverage of pediatric HIV care and treatment, however, is proportionally much lower than the coverage of adults in our report. In all of these specific um, conclusions, the report has a lot of detail on each, a cha whole chapters in, in some senses devoted to each of these. We were also asked to look at PEPFAR's efforts to address gender-specific aspects of HIV, and I would encourage those of you interested in that to look at that chapter because it really talks about the evolution of PEPFAR's approach to thinking about gender and um, not just looking at women and girls as beneficiaries, but understanding the vulnerabilities, gender norms that structure how women and girls um, live their lives, and also the role of men and boys in um, combating uh, HIV. Um, the program has has been moving in this direction. There's still more work to do. And one of the conclusions we, we came to was that there still is a lack of clear objectives and desired outcomes uh, for the program. This, in part, is due to the challenge of measuring in this area, but we provide, um, uh, hopefully, some, some helpful suggestions in that regard. We were also asked to look at the effects of PEPFAR on health systems. And this is one, um, you know, this is an area that a lot of us working in global health talk about, and it's hard to 
uh, touch and, and, and um, understand, but we actually found a lot of evidence of PEPFAR's impact on strengthening systems, laboratories, supply chain, workforce, so we, I encourage those of you interested in, in that to look at that chapter. Um, and we did find evidence that PEPFAR has engaged with partner, partner country governments across many countries and others to strengthen health systems, and in general been able to work with countries to increase their own knowledge of the epidemic in their, in their country. So putting this together and our overall conclusions, which led to our recommendations, though, with, even with all of this progress towards targets, towards um, you know, having impact, we actually did, were able to conclude that there has been significant impact. There's still substantial unmet need out there. Um, there's still a lot of need for services and programs um, going forward. We also concluded that the critical issue for the future is how to sustain what's been done, but also continue to make progress towards controlling the epidemic and, frankly, moving toward a sustainable model, which, um, as you'll, you'll hear more in the conclusions, um, again, just to, to harken back to 2008 when the uh, program was reauthorized, the idea that there would be country ownership and that there would be sustainability was um, an idea. It was in the legislation. It was being talked about. It was a desire. We actually found evidence of moving in that direction. Still a long way to go, but it's, um, it's, the program is moving there. So with that, I'm going to, uh, oh, just, we have, these are our recommendations preview for Anne. Um, we had recommendations in four broad, broad areas. One were recommendations concerning scale-up. We have recommendations concerning um, how to strengthen systems in partner countries, how to help transition to a sustainable response, and how to transform knowledge management, um, which we, we, we spent a lot of time thinking about because we think PEPFAR has a unique role to play there, but is not necessarily taking full advantage of what it can do. And just to reiterate, in some areas, PEPFAR is actually, for those of you who know the program well, will see some of these recommendations and say they're already doing that. I would remind you some of that is recent, some of it is in process. Um, but our intent here was really to inform and support this, the furthering of, of that work. So with that, I'll turn it over to 